Hello everyone, thank you for connecting. Um, thank you for uh, being a part of this course on the Keys to Supernatural Ministry. In this session, we will talk about personal preparation and what is required for us to flow uh, in the supernatural and to manifest the supernatural. So I'm just going to cover the different keys of personal preparation one by one. Uh, let's first begin with uh, intimacy with God. We already have these points in our notes, uh, but I'm going to go over them, uh, elaborating and explaining them further. So the first key for personal preparation to manifest the supernatural is uh, intimacy with God. Um, and we know that the Word of God talks so much about uh, the word abiding in us and us abiding uh, in, in Christ. Uh, when we look at John chapter 15, Jesus said that it's important for us to be planted in Him and connected uh, to Him. And that's the place uh, from where we receive His light. That's the place from where we uh, receive His counsel, His guidance, His power, uh, and everything. He is our source. So for us to manifest the supernatural, we must ensure that we are connected to Christ Jesus, our source. Now, how do we do this? There are many things that we can do to pursue intimacy with God. When we look at the life of Jesus, he spent many hours in prayer. Uh, he was intimate with the Father. So, for us today, uh, we can do similar things like taking time in prayer, um, worshipping the Lord, having personal worship, uh, taking time to meditate on the Word of God, uh, confess the Word of God, uh, engage in fasting. And all of these will help us draw closer to God be more intimate uh, with our God and that is the place from where the power of God will flow and we will see greater works done through our lives. Uh, even if we go back to the example of uh, the church, the early church, uh, we see them spending a lot of time in prayer, uh, we see them responding prayer to various situations, they knew that as they uh, went before the Lord and spent that time, they would be a powerful church. And uh, we see the manifestation of this time that they invested in prayer. They had great grace upon them, there was great favor, many signs, wonders and miracles took place uh, through the praying church of the Book of Acts. And that's a reminder for us today to spend time with God, be intimate with God, and uh, receive from God. They talk about uh, the flow of the Spirit uh, touching people's lives. When uh, you know Jesus mentioned this in John chapter 7, uh, verses 37 and 38, he said, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. So that's an outflow that we are expecting through us. But the outflow uh, is, is uh, powerful when there is a receiving of the inflow. And that is what we need to remember. So the more we receive from God, we are positioning ourselves to release for God. And that inflow will happen from our place of personal uh, intimacy with God. We need that. Without that, uh, it, it will not be, you know, we, can, we can flow in the supernatural a little bit here and there, but uh, that constant flow uh, will only come when we are receiving from God. Uh, and just, uh, just a word of uh, emphasis on doing this out of love, seeking God and being intimate with God uh, from a place of loving Him and genuinely desiring Him and not so much uh, from a place of law where 
we're supposed to play for these many hours, or we're supposed to um, read God's word, we're supposed to worship. And God is not looking for that. He doesn't want us to, to seek Him out of obligation. We do it joyfully uh, and uh, a place of really enjoying God, uh, finding that pleasure uh, in being with Him. And that's intimacy, that's true intimacy. And uh, this place of intimacy becomes the place of receiving from God. And then we are able to manifest the supernatural. So intimacy with God is important for us to prepare ourselves for the supernatural. Now coming to the next important aspect, it would be um, establishing oneself in the right identity. What is the right identity? It is understanding who we are in Christ. We need to know who we are in Christ. Um, you know, the Bible has so much to talk about that, the fact that we are redeemed, we are blessed, we are children of God. Um, when, we, when we walk in the supernatural, uh, we need to function from that place. Otherwise, um, we may carry a wrong sense of um, entitlement. It can be a wrong sense of uh, superiority um, or even, you know, a, a sense of uh, low self-worth. Uh, all these things happen when we are not clear about who we are in Christ. So when the supernatural manifests, we may uh, feel like you know, we are entitled to people's praises and their honor. Or we may feel like uh, we are better than others. And that's why God is working through us. Uh, but we know that, you know, God works uh, in spite of us. There are many times that uh, God still goes ahead and does the miracle because of his love and compassion for people not necessarily because of you know our uh, greatness or you know our great pursuit of God, and we need to know that. So we uh, the honor that people give us. Uh, uh, let's let's remember the testimony of the uh, leaders of the early church. Times when miracles happen, we find Peter reminding the people that uh, they must look to God because it was God who did the miracle. Similarly, in Paul, we find him stating the same thing when a notable miracle happened. And uh, that's a lesson for us when we're saying, uh, yes, miracles happen, the supernatural manifests, but it's not because of us. It's because of who our God is. And so we must always give God the glory. And that will happen when we know who we are in Christ. Uh, and uh, when we talk about low self-worth, at times when, when maybe a miracle did not happen or the supernatural did not manifest, if we are not uh, strong in our identity in Christ, then that can push us to a place of uh, uh, condemnation, guilt, and you know we kind of make it about ourselves. Uh, now again, if we are strong in our identity that we can overcome all these challenges. So being established in our identity with Christ is uh, very helpful and necessary for us to function um, powerfully in the supernatural. Now let's move on to another very important uh, part uh, that we need to consider and that is compassion. So as we're talking about the manifestation of the supernatural somewhere, we can develop the wrong motivation. Uh, and so, you know, we need to check our hearts and ask ourselves the question, why do we want uh, the supernatural to manifest? Why are we asking God for healing? So why are we asking him for miracles? And we can have, we can ask all these questions. And if the answer is that we uh, care about people and we want to see them heal, we want to see them delivered, then that would be the right answer. Because even in the ministry of Jesus, he moved with 
compassion. He was concerned for people. Uh, and that is why he performed many miracles. One uh, scripture that we can state is Matthew 14, 14, that talks about uh, the compassion of Jesus. He was moved with compassion. Uh, and he did his miracles. So we must function from a place of compassion. And faith really works from that place of love as Galatians 5, 6 also tells us. So love is where um, uh, the desire for more of the supernatural must begin. Uh, not so much for, you know, uh, our fame, glory, or uh, any, any of those reasons, but we are motivated by love and uh, compassion for people. And as we move ahead in love, God will do wonderful things in people's lives. So the fourth uh, aspect for us to consider is holiness. When we walk in holiness, a God will be able to do uh, much more and uh, release his power. We uh, discussed earlier in one of our sessions how Paul spoke to Timothy and he said that one uh, will uh, get rid of sin and uh, become a vessel of honor. Then they will be ready for the master's use. So even today what God wants us is he wants us to present ourselves in the holiness to him. And holiness is to get rid of all sin, sinful habits, uh, anything that may pollute us or taint us in our hearts, in our minds, uh, uh, you know, anything at all that is uh, abyss or, or anything that is um, away from the standards of God, that is sin. And, uh, we don't want that in our lives. We want to be that vessel of through whom God can work at all times. Now, as believers, we may say that yes, uh, I am already uh, walking holy before God, and there is uh, no evil in my life or my lifestyle. But we just want to bring our, our attention to another um, aspect here where, uh, yes, there may be nothing notably wrong. Uh, in our lives, uh, but uh, we, we may have, you know, seemingly unnecessary things uh, in, in our lives, which is also something that we need to get rid of. Uh, if we look at the example of Apostle Paul in First Corinthians chapter six and verse twelve, he says, "All things are lawful for me, but all things are not helpful." All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. So what he's saying is, he's presenting himself to God in such a way that uh, even if there are uh, so-called uh, good things and you know, so-called not sinful things, uh, and yet if they are unnecessary, they're not helpful, he uh, avoids even those things so that he can present himself to God in a, uh, in a uh, holy manner. And so that uh, it, it, it is something we can consider as uh, believers and want to uh, pursue the Lord. Maybe there are, there are things like, you know, our spending time on our phone, uh, Maybe we're not looking at anything sinful, but it could be a waste of time. It could be uh, distracting us from God. And, and then it becomes unnecessary. We may have to uh, put ourselves or speak to ourselves and say, okay, you know, this, this is not helpful. Uh, and I need to get rid of this particular habit. And similarly, there are, there are very many things that we can look at. And this can be very personal to each one of us, where uh, we can be led by God, hear from him and see what are those matters in our lives which are not helpful uh, and uh, get rid of them. So there should be nothing that uh, rules us 
as you know, we, we read from that uh, passage of uh, 1 Corinthians 6 12, where Paul said, I will not be brought under the power of any. So nothing should be able to rule us. No appetite should rule us. Only Christ should rule us. So keeping our lives in that place uh, is something that we must look into. Uh, and we also see uh, how Jesus, when he talked about the true vine and the branches, he also stated that the Father, he proves, uh, he gets rid of unnecessary uh, parts of the vine so that the vine can continue to grow, thrive, uh, and bear fruit. So this is applicable to our lives, pruning out unnecessary things, unimportant things, um, sinful things to present ourselves in holiness to God is uh, what God really wants uh, from us and we will be able to manifest the supernatural in greater measure as we pursue uh, consecration, as we pursue healing uh, to God and aligning ourselves to the very heart of God. Now, the next aspect for us to consider uh, to prepare ourselves is to learn to walk in dominion and authority. Uh, we see the life of Jesus, the way he rebuked uh, sicknesses, the way he uh, rebuked uh, or he cast out demons, um, the way he took authority even when it came to uh, natural factors that were opposing the works of God at, at the time in Matthew chapter 8, where Jesus uh, uh, rebukes the winds and the waves. These are all uh, pictures of how Jesus took authority. And today we know because Jesus died on the cross, we carry that authority and dominion. Uh, and Jesus has won the victory over Satan on the cross. And so what, what we can uh, uh, do is to simply enforce that victory in all aspects of our lives and that will help us to manifest the supernatural. Um, so you know we can take authority over sin, we can take dominion uh, over any demonic works, we can um, you know manifest the, the power of God wherever it is um, necessary. So every work of Satan you know, we can manifest the, the authority of God. Uh, now, another aspect to consider when we talk about dominion and authority is to have the confidence um, that Jesus has already won the victory on the cross. And so uh, nothing that Satan does will harm us. We have uh, scriptures to back that up. When Jesus sent his disciples in Luke chapter 10 verse 19 and asked them, you know, you go, you do supernatural works. He reminds them that uh, they will trample on serpents and scorpions, nothing by any means would be able to harm them. So uh, that is comforting and encouraging for us to know that uh, today, as we do God's work, as we go against the works of Satan and his demons, we don't have to be afraid of uh, any harm coming to us that God yeah, is with us, God will help us, He will lead us and He will guide us. So uh, we need not be afraid of any backlash. Uh, 1 John 5 18 also reminds us and tells us that the enemy cannot touch us uh, when we position ourselves in holiness before the Lord. So knowing, understanding our authority, functioning in our authority is another crucial step for us to be prepared to manifest the supernatural. Now, uh, further, uh, let's talk about growing in the anointing because that again is uh, something that one must do to see more of the supernatural. Now, we've already gained an understanding of uh, the anointing. We said that there is an anointing within as uh, per 1 John chapter 2, verse 20 and 27. And we also stated that there is an anointing upon the way Jesus uh, uh, testified of the Spirit of the Lord being upon him in Luke chapter 4. So based on uh, this, what we're saying is we can grow in the anointing, whether it is the anointing within to help us become 
more like Jesus, uh, or the anointing upon us, empowering us to constantly do the works of God and to see God's power uh, being made manifest. And uh, growing in the anointing, uh, we must remember what we said earlier about intimacy. That's the source uh, from where the inflow will happen and there will be a greater release of the anointing through our lives. Um, so how do we how do we ensure an increase in our anointing? So a couple of things um, that uh, again we've already touched on these matters. Uh, we can discover the grace of God upon our lives and uh, the gifts aligned to that grace, um, the calling of God, when we have that understanding, we're able to function in that zone, uh, and which is very powerful, and the anointing increases over our lives. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 7, that's the instruction uh, to us to recognize the grace of God, recognize the, the, uh, you know, the gift of God. And accordingly, invest our time and invest uh, our uh, uh, energy. And as we do that, you know, we're yielding to that gift and grace of God, and we, we will see that there is a greater anointing that we minister. Uh, even Apostle Paul, he uh, was all about the calling that God had for him, and he functioned uh, in that grace. Uh, so that the, the working of God's power becomes effective in and through his life. Uh, so this is the way in which we can grow in the anointing, uh, the empowering of, of God. And the measure of this anointing can keep increasing as we submit ourselves, as we walk in holiness, as we walk in consecration. We can also increase in our anointing through impartation. Now, impartation is biblical. We uh, see in John chapter 3 and verse 27 that uh, no one can receive anything unless it is uh, given to him from heaven. So, anointing comes from God. It's not something that we give and take uh, among, you know, between ourselves as human beings. So, anointing comes from God. It can be imparted to us from God. How can we receive this impartation? We can receive impartation through association. When we honor uh, people who are carrying uh, the, the, the anointing of God and they're associated with them in any way, maybe we're working with them, we're following them in history, uh, then we can expect impartation from that, uh, from, uh, you know, that place of association. Now, impartation is also aligned to the gifts and callings of God. We already discussed that. And the uh, impartation uh, happens at a certain level, and one needs to still nurture the nurture the gift for the anointing to increase. So we receive a measure of the impartation. Not uh, we don't look at it as you know, everything which a person has. Uh, ministry has is imparted completely to another person. So these are some key thoughts regarding impartation. And, um, in this manner, we can actually grow uh, in the anointing of God. So we'll just keep moving on. We'll cover a couple of uh, other aspects that will be helpful for us to prepare ourselves. So now we come to uh, inner wholeness. And uh, we're saying that very similar to identity, when we um, are at a place where we receive the healing of God for our inner man, for our soulish uh, person, we can minister from a place of wholeness. And that is very important. If we are not fully healed, uh, in a man, and we still carry some hurts. Uh, we carry uh, painful experiences, and we've not let God completely heal us. Then that can uh, show up in the way we minister, in our expressions, 
uh, in ministry, which can be dangerous, it can be harmful for people at times, and which is why we, we must ensure that uh, we uh, come before the Lord and we open ourselves up to God and we say, God, help me, heal me, so that I can function from a place of wholeness. Um, so, what if we don't receive that wholeness from God? Uh, it will show up. It will show up in uh, the statements that we make. It will show up in the way we uh, relate to people. It may show up uh, in our improper motivation uh, in our ministry. And that's the danger. And so, uh, what we need to design is to be whole uh, before God and be that vessel right, where uh, uh, our emotions, our thoughts, our motives, everything is uh, submitted to God and we no longer uh, have uh, prejudice and bias because of some of the hurts that we are carrying. And when we are in that place, you know, we can minister the pure gift of God. We know that the gifts of God, all the gifts of God, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, they are all pure. Um, but the issue happens when the vessel that they come through is not pure. And the vessel is us. The vessel is our hearts. Uh, which is why in 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 20 uh, and 21, Paul reminds the believers, test all things and hold fast to what is good. But the reason is that God uses the perfect gift. Uh, however, uh, due to the, the manner that you know the vessel is, if there are hurts and uh, unhealed parts of us, that it taints the flow of the gift of God. And, uh, so, for us on the receiver's side, we uh, need to test everything and we hold fast to what is good. Or we we uh, evaluate uh, what is being put forth and we receive what is from God and leave behind things which uh, may be coming from the biases of people and the prejudices that they carry. So emotional wholeness is something we need to pursue throughout our uh, journey of life and ministry. That will really help us manifest the supernatural. So let's keep going. There are uh, a couple of uh, other things that we want to talk about. Um, the next one would be humility. Uh, and we know that God has promised more grace when we humble ourselves. God gives grace to the humble, scripture says. Uh, and so being in that place of humility where even when uh, mighty things are happening through our ministry, we we acknowledge that it is God's grace and uh, God's power in our lives which is actually making that happen. We position ourselves in a place of honoring God, worshipping God. That's that place of humility and submission. And we need to be in that position. When we are in that place of giving God the glory, you know, it's, it's not because of, it's not we ourselves, but because of God, um, then uh, our, our character is in a, in a place where God can trust us more and He can give us greater responsibility. So greater grace comes uh, to the humble, uh, as James 4 verse says, God gives grace to the humble and grace is what we need to keep serving the Lord, to keep going down into higher levels and in supernatural ministry it's so very important because some of the manifestations that we see around us can be very grand uh, and if we are not careful we, we think that it's because of us and we uh, uh, you know get distracted and that's what we want to be cautious about uh, finally the last uh, and, and yet important aspect to remember is to keep learning constantly and expanding. There's so much we can learn about how one can manifest the supernatural, how one can um, flow in the gifts of the spirit. 
uh, and it's it's a constant learning from our own practice uh, and from the lives of uh, people around us. But the primary source, of course, would be the Word of God, where we go back to the Word, we meditate on the Word, and see how God, uh, what uh, you know, God's power is all about, and uh, how He wants that power to be released in order to glorify His name. So constant learning, constant expanding. Uh, uh, that's in fact a, a very exciting thing that we will never really reach the uh, fullness of our understanding of God and the supernatural you know, because God is incredible, His power is incredible uh, and, and we can keep pursuing it and keep increasing you know, our understanding uh, of who He is, what He does and how to manifest it in and through our lives. And will mistakes happen? Of course, mistakes will happen. Uh, but we can learn from that experience of failure or missing the mark and come back on track. Keep picking up new things and uh, expanding, um, you know, in, in manifesting the supernatural. So staying hungry for the Lord. Uh, as Jesus said on the Sermon on the Mount, he said that if you are hungry, then you will be filled. And uh, it's very important, especially in supernatural ministry, to be hungry for more of God, for more of what God can do. So that's uh, a little bit about the preparation aspect. Let's now look at section four, which covers the pursuit. So uh, we can position ourselves to receive from God, uh, to manifest the supernatural. Now, how do we go after God um, to see more of the supernatural? So there are four aspects that we will uh, talk about. One is expectation. The second is taking the risks. Third one is stepping up to higher levels. And fourth is being relentless. So this is a daily pursuit uh, of the supernatural through our lives. So firstly, to have an expectation. Yeah, in this course, we've laid the biblical foundation about the possibility of the supernatural through the life of every believer. So every day, we can carry that expectation. Jesus said in John chapter 14, verse 12, that you shall do greater things than these. Uh, and each of us as believers, we are called to do greater things for God. Every day we can expect that you know God's power will manifest, miracles will happen, um, God will work through us to give a word to someone, or you know, we will receive a word from God, God will intervene in our situations, the circumstances. Uh, and as we talked about the first key, the spiritual understanding, the spiritual realm, we we move with that confidence that the spiritual realm will have a bearing on the natural realm. And that expectation is important. Uh, an expectation that God will do greater things it is also uh, something that we must maintain. How do we stay in the space of expectation, get into the Word, the more we spend time with the Word, and we see what Jesus is calling every believer to do. The way he says, okay, go, uh, yeah, go uh, heal the sick, cleanse the leper, le 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 raise the dead. So as part of the Great Commission, this is what we are supposed to do. We are supposed to see the supernatural. We are supposed to see the manifestation of the gifts of the Spirit. Our expectation keeps rising. So staying in the Word and um, uh, keeping our expectation at, at that high level. And also intimacy with God as we are uh, intimate with the Lord, worshipping Him, spending time in prayer. That level of expectation will uh, be maintained. Even as we see you know, manifestation of God's power around us, that also can uh, raise the bar and it can also push us to believe God for greater things. So that's very crucial to maintain that hunger and that expectation uh, and help us to pursue God. The second one is to take risks. 
Um, once again, we talked a lot about it and we said that one needs to step up. It is said that fame is spent R-I-S-K, risk, uh, where we are willing to um, trust God uh, for uh, God's intervention in someone's life. So we're ready to pray for them or we're ready to command healing uh, to uh, their sick bodies. So all of this will take courage. We may worry about what people might say. We may worry about um, our reputation. Uh, we may worry about many, many things. But ultimately, you know, the word of God says that all believers are called to this. So there's got to be some point in our lives where we step out, and not just once, but time and again to keep stepping out uh, and uh, be bold enough to um, flow in the gifts of the Spirit. And that will help us to see more of God's power, God's miracles released. Um, and you know, there are many things that we can discuss about the way uh, there are diversities, uh, operations, um, uh, of the manifestation of you know, uh, the gifts of God, and how the power of God um, uh, is expressed. But in order to see all this, one needs to be willing, uh, one needs to uh, be bold enough and say, okay, you know, I'm just going to step into it. And uh, God will God will make it happen. Uh, and so that has to come from us. Okay? Uh, and uh, yeah, so that's a little bit about the uh, taking risks aspect. Uh, coming to the next one, which would be uh, stepping up into higher levels. As we look at um, the Word of God, we are promised. That under the new covenant, okay, there will be a greater uh, manifestation of the works of God's power and the work of His Spirit. So this is uh, in the passage, Second Corinthians chapter three, verses five through eleven. So based on this promise, uh, we can expect more of the supernatural now than what used to happen under the old covenant. Um, I know many of the things that took place under the old covenant and in the Old Testament were quite spectacular. But as per God's word, under the new covenant, we have a greater promise of the manifestation of God's power. And so uh, we can keep uh, stretching ourselves to see more. Because God has God has spoken, there will be higher levels. So what are these higher levels? One needs to pursue the higher levels. So we can pursue higher anointing, greater anointing, and uh, say, God, we want a greater anointing for your works to be done. Uh, we could pray for greater anointing uh, to minister the word. Pray for greater anointing to um, bring people into the kingdom. We could pray for greater anointing for uh, the demonstration of the supernatural. We can pray for greater anointing uh, to see a large impact uh, of, of the works of God. So all of these things are part of our pursuit. And as we move in this direction, uh, there will be more uh, that we would experience. And finally, uh, in our pursuit, it's important for us to be relentless. We talked about persistence in the key to super, keys to supernatural ministry, but here again is a reminder that in our pursuit, we must be um, so determined that even when we encounter challenging phases, uh, we must not give up. We need to hold on. As we stated earlier, there could be failures that we face, there could be persecutions that happen because we are uh, talking about the supernatural uh, or you know, we are praying for someone's healing, others may not like it, uh, there can be misunderstandings, but 
despite all of this, uh, having that never give up attitude and uh, going after the supernatural, staying on course is what God wants from us. Because we are clear about the biblical foundations of the supernatural, we can um, be convinced and we can actually go ahead and pursue and trust God for more of the supernatural. So with this, we have covered the remaining uh, portions in our course and uh, really hope that uh, uh, each one of us will step up and see more of God's power being made by Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for a reminder um, that, Lord, uh, you are at work, Lord, in and through us. And Father God, uh, you are calling us to do the greater works of the kingdom. Uh, Father God, we pray that uh, all the discussions that we've had through this course will help us, Lord, position ourselves uh, to. Be bold and courageous, Lord, to step out. <coughs> Father, to uh, see your power in amazing ways, Lord. Lord, let many lives be blessed. Let the kingdom of God come. And Father, let many souls come into the kingdom. We thank you, Lord. We bless you, we honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. So just wanting um, this time to thank everyone for being a part of this course. God bless you and all the best for uh, the assignments. <laughs>